guys and thank you so much for joining me if you are new here i'm kat and i like to talk about true crime conspiracies and all sorts of related things today let's talk about the witch elm and who put bella in there i think that this is a great video for halloween so i'm hoping this will be published in time for halloween but just a quick disclaimer before we get started i don't mean uh, all the information that i'm giving you in the video is already found in the public domain I also don't mean to be disrespectful to anyone I talk about in the video. This is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's start. In April of 1943, four young boys were searching for bird nests in a place called Hagley Woods near Stourbridge. This was a town in the area of the West Midlands in the United Kingdom. Legally, they were not really supposed to be there, but they snuck into the area anyway and they went exploring. Eventually, they came across a large witch elm. One of the boys decided to climb the tree and see if it contained any nests. At that moment, he found a skull nestled into the tree. When someone wrote, who put Bella in the witch elm? Around the area, the graffiti gave birth to a crime mystery that had endured nearly 80 years. In the hollow center of the tree, the boy saw what he thought to be an animal skull. He reached down to pick it up and discovered to his horror that the object was actually a human skull. It was complete with teeth and patches of hair. He quickly dropped this dark discovery back into the tree's hollow. The youngsters talked among themselves and decided that since they were on the property illegally, they would keep this a secret. However, one of the boys apparently couldn't really keep the secret. His parents learned all about the skull and they quickly contacted the local authorities. Police went to investigate and pulled the skull from its hiding place. They dug further into the tree and came away with a full skeleton minus one hand. Other discoveries included a wedding ring, one shoe and remnants of cloth in the skull's mouth. They dug around the base of the tree and later discovered the missing hand. A forensic examination by a local professor revealed the fact that the skeleton was that of a female of about 35 years old. He estimated that she had been dead for approximately 18 months. Additionally, the body would not have fit into the hollow of the tree once rigor mortis had set in. Therefore, someone had most likely put her into the elm tree while she was still alive or soon after the death, but before rigor mortis set in. The presence of the cloth later determined to be a kind of a taffeta material in the skull's mouth indicated the strong possibility that the unknown woman had died from asphyxiation. Due to the war and a lot of movement within England, the chances of identifying the skeleton were slim. She could have been someone from the local area. On the other hand, she may have been someone just passing through on the way to a different place. And the number of missing women of that era was enormous. However, the authorities did their best to find a name to go with the skeleton and to develop theories of how she got there in the first place. Being wartime, one possibility they discussed was that the woman was involved in some kind of covert operation for the Germans. Did someone kill her for some reason because she was a spy? Or was she a loyal Brit who stumbled upon spy activity at the wrong place and time? This seemed like an unlikely scenario, but it was a possible explanation. But a more sinister theory surfaced, because one of the woman's hands were in a different location from the rest of the body, some people theorized that the woman died in some kind of a human sacrifice. There is a folk belief that the hand of glory can give magical powers. Usually, the occultists would take the hand of an executed criminal and then dry it to use for occult purposes. Other authorities believed the much more plausible explanation that wild animals move the hand away from its original location with the body. The puzzle continued for several months. 
and then got even more mysterious. Starting in December, graffiti was painted throughout the area. Initially, near the site of the body, someone had written, who put Lubella down the witch arm? The police investigated the presence of a possible name for the skeleton. Lubella would have been an unusual name. Unfortunately, this led nowhere. Later, graffiti found on a stone monument near the site asked, who put Bella in the witch arm? This would be replicated in other areas, however, no one knew the identity of the person creating the graffiti. Police wondered about the name. Did someone in the local area know the identity of the dead woman? Was she someone named Bella? Searches throughout the local area turned up no missing person report of someone with that name. Perhaps a husband or lover put Bella in the witch arm? Similar graffiti would turn up on walls and monuments for quite some time. Oddly, witch, witch, became witch in many cases, but eventually the graffiti just stopped and nobody knew why. Over time, the legend of Bella and the witch arm became a local legend. Today, children still hear this story which ensures that the mystery of the unfortunate woman in the witch arm will endure for many years to come. So guys, who put Bella in the witch arm? Did you ever hear about this story? And to this day, they still don't know who the woman in the witch arm was. Please let me know in the comments below what do you think of this. Please let me know if you do live uh, in the UK, maybe you are local to the area, if there is any information that you have, which I've already not uh, shared in the video. This is all I, I could find online. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if this video goes on time for Halloween, happy Halloween, everybody. Bye.